The Celtics had an excellent offseason. By adding Malcolm Brogdon and Danilo Gallinari, the Celtics managed to upgrade a roster that was just two wins away from winning the championship last season. So in this video, we're going to do an in-depth analysis of the Celtics roster for the upcoming season. But before we continue, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please, if you enjoy the content, please like the video and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. The starting point guard for the Celtics will be Marcus Smart. Smart has gotten better every year he's been in the league. He's gone from just a defensive specialist early in his career to a good starting point guard and a leader on this team. Marcus Smart can drive and finish at the basket and he's become a decent playmaker. He struggled with his shooting to begin the season, but in the last 40 games of the year, he shot a decent 35% from downtown. Smart was crucial in the Celtics getting to the finals and he'll be crucial in the Celtics going on a deep run next year. Backing up Smart is Malcolm Brogdon. Brogdon could easily start, but the Celtics have made it clear that they view him as more of a six-man. Brogdon is a quality point guard that can attack the basket, finish at the rim, and set up his teammates for easy baskets. And defensively, he fits perfectly with Boston as a big, long defender that can guard multiple positions. In the finals, the Celtics were in desperate need of another player that could break down the defense and create open shots, so Brogdon fills a huge void. Even though he's coming off the bench, I imagine the Celtics will use him in closing lineups to finish games. Next at point guard, we have Peyton Pritchard. Pritchard is a scrappy player that despite being just 6 feet tall, is a pretty solid defender. He's also a knockdown outside shooter, hitting 41% of his threes his two years in the league. Pritchard is pretty limited offensively, as he isn't going to be doing much off the dribble stuff, but he's a good contributor off the bench. Last at point guard, we have J.D. Davidson. Davidson was taken with the 53rd pick in the draft out of Alabama. Davidson is an explosive guard that can get to the basket, finish strong, and also create for his teammates. He likely won't get much minutes in his rookie year, so it would make sense for the Celtics to send him to the G League to get burned. Now we move on to shooting guards. Starting at the two guard spot will be Jalen Brown, who will be headed into his seventh season in the league. Brown was amazing for the Celtics in the playoffs, averaging 23.7 boards and 3 assists per game throughout Boston's postseason. He's a tough-minded player with a great off-the-dribble game and he really gets after it defensively. One area of his game that still needs to get better is turnovers. He turned the ball over at the same rate that he got assists in the postseason. But Jalen Brown is still an absolute star and he's gotten better every year in the league. At just 25 years old, he hasn't even hit his prime yet, so the sky's the limit. Next we have Derek White. Trading for Derek White during the trade deadline ended up being a great move by Brad Stevens. He fit right into the Celtics system as a big point guard that's good on both ends of the floor. White averaged 11 points and 4 assists per game off the bench for Boston and came up big in several playoff games, including a 22-point game against the Miami Heat in Game 6 of the Conference Finals. Derek White will continue to be a big part of Boston's second unit next season. At small forward, we have Jason Tatum. After struggling to start last season, Tatum made the superstar leap. Back in January, he was in a shooting slump where he missed 23 points in a row, but after dropping 51 points on the Wizards, Tatum flipped the switch and went off the rest of the season. He was great in the Celtics finals run. He completely outplayed Durant as the Celtics swept the Nets in the first round, and throughout the playoffs, he really made strides as a playmaker. Unfortunately, Tatum shot the ball pretty poorly in the finals with just a 36% field goal percentage, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. This was Tatum's first finals of his career, and for him to lead his team to the finals at just 24 years old is nothing short of amazing. That stinging defeat will ultimately make Tatum a better player and motivate him to lead the Celtics to their 18th championship next season. Backing up Jason Tatum is Grant Williams. Williams was a key contributor to the Celtics' finals run. He's a big, strong defender that can guard multiple positions, and on the offensive end, he's a knockdown shooter, hitting 41% from three last season. His outside shooting is huge for the Celtics' offense because that creates driving lanes for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. In the closeout game against the Bucks, he burns Milwaukee for 27 points, knocking down seven three-pointers. He'll continue to be a key part of the Celtics' second unit. Next, we have Sam Hauser. Sam Hauser was signed to a three-year, $6 million deal this offseason. He didn't play much for the Celtics last season, but in the minutes he did get, he showed to be a knockdown outside shooter, hitting 43% of his threes. Hauser will have a serious chance to break into Boston's rotation next season. 
At power forward, we have Al Horford. Al Horford was a critical part of the Celtics' final run last year. He averaged 12 points and 9 boards a game in the playoffs and shot an unreal 48% from downtown. More importantly, he came up big in several important games for the Celtics in the playoffs, including a 30-point game against the Bucks. Despite being a seasoned veteran at 35 years old, Al Horford is still an excellent defender that can really move his feet and guard multiple positions. On the offensive end, he's become an excellent outside shooter. Going into next season, Horford will more than likely get the start at the power forward position and will continue to be a key part of the Celtics rotation. Backing up Al Horford will be Gallinari. Gallo is another veteran that's pretty long in the tooth, but still has a lot left in the tank. Even at age 33, he can still get you a bucket, whether it's scoring in the post or knocking down shots from mid-range. And he's an excellent three-point shooter, hitting 38% from downtown last year. He's pretty slow defensively at this stage of his career, but the Celtics do have defenders to cover for him. Overall, Gallo is a great addition to the Celtics bench. At center, we have Robert Williams. The Time Lord has become one of the best defensive bigs in the league. He's an elite shot blocker where his 7'6 wingspan and great athleticism make him a nightmare to finish over. And thanks to his agility, he can switch onto the perimeter and hold his own. And on the offensive end, he's not only a great finisher, but also a good passer for a big man. At just 24 years old, the Time Lord is a crucial part of the Celtics' young core. And lastly, we have Luke Cornette. Luke Cornette has bounced around the league the past few seasons. He wasn't able to break the Celtics rotation last year, but he did play well in the G League. I don't expect Cornette to play much this upcoming season, but he might be able to earn some spot minutes. At the very least, he's a 7-footer that can block shots and hit open threes. And with that said guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Where do you think the Celtics stand in the East? Do you think they're favorites to get back to the finals next season? Tell me in the comments. Make sure you like the video and subscribe and click this video to get a deeper look at why the Celtics had a great offseason.